I'd like to say hello to everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Restoration Christian Fellowship Church Bible Study, July 26, 2023. We thank you for joining the class on tonight. Uh, we're still in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, tonight we're going to be uh, covering, um, still in uh, verse 11, uh, but we're going to um, be on page 13 of your packet, page 13, and the gift of a pastor is where we're going to start at on tonight. Um, and we'll go on from there. Uh, we're going to open up with a, a scripture. Um, we're going to open up with Psalms 100 on tonight. And Psalms 100 uh, reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and that we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. And I love this part here. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And this truth endureth to all generations. Amen. And I love that last part as well. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Uh, once again, i like to thank those who are joining. Uh, thank our pastor for being on, uh, Sister Ricky, myself, and all those who will view this in the future. Amen. Let us uh, pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight first, asking for forgiveness for anything we may have said or done outside of your will. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our God. Oh God, we just thank you for this day that you have made for us and how you orchestrated our day throughout this day, uh, bringing us to this point in our day where we're here at Bible study. And God, we just thank you for protecting us from all harm and danger, oh God, uh, from enemy attacks against us. We just thank you for your blood that has covered us and watched over us and kept us all day long. God, we just thank you for our pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Imogene Ingram, being on a class with us on tonight. We continue to pray for her. We continue to pray for the wisdom you've given her to guide us as our shepherd, as our pastor. We just thank you for her strength, her endurance, and we just ask you to just continue touching her body and giving her the strength, oh God, to um, pastor, oh God, uh, uh, us and um, this part of the vineyard in the name of Jesus Christ. And we just thank you for the um, just the love that she has for the work, and we just thank you for the vision that you're given our pastor and our uh, um, overseer in this passing. We just thank you for him as well. And God, we thank you for all those members of Restoration um, lay people, elders, ministers, deacons, oh God, we just lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to perfect everything that concerns us, oh God, whether it's healing, deliverance, oh God, financial problems, or whatever it may be, God, we thank you for making us all perfect in your sight, oh God. Fix our um, love um, for each other, oh God. Fix our homes, marriages, oh God, relationships with children, oh God, grandchildren, oh God, with co-workers or whoever it may be, oh God. We just ask you to be in the midst of all the Restoration Christian family, oh God, homes, work, oh God, in our friends as well. Touch our friends that are sick, um, that um, need help on tonight. We pray for them and we pray for your healing to flow all throughout this uh, broadcast, oh God. We anoint we um, just invite your presence into this class on tonight. We just ask you to have your way, oh God, over the airways on this night, oh God. Oh God, we pray for the Bell family, oh God, uh, the loss of a grandmother and a mother. Oh God, we pray for her and her family, oh God. We ask you to touch them, oh God, give them comfort, oh God, during this time of loss, oh God. And we just pray that you will comfort them and that you will be with them, oh God, as they go through the um, grieving process and the healing process, oh God, of losing a loved one. So God, we pray for the Bell family and all other families that have lost loved ones on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, oh God, for our nation. We continue to pray for President Biden. We pray, oh God, that you would just continue to surround him with godly men and women that will support him and help him, oh God, govern our nation according to the Bible, not according to the world ways, but according to scripture, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, oh God, also for our local, federal, and state governments. Um, we pray for governors, mayors, oh God, of all the um, communities around our nation. We pray for um, uh, countries, uh, Ukraine, Nigeria, oh God, Africa, oh God, China, oh God, Ukraine, all of those um, uh, remote uh, countries, oh God, that are um, battling for their own existence, oh God. We just lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we just pray that your um, your 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 peace 
will prevail in all those areas of God. Even um, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, Israel, oh God, how they are in uproar right now, oh God. We pray for them as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Send your peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, once again, we invite you into this class. We thank you for those that are here and those who will uh, view this uh, broadcast in the future. We just ask you that your presence, oh God, will just take over and have your way. Word all of our mouths on tonight as we uh, study, oh God, uh, these next two gifts, oh God, the gift of pastor and the gift of a teacher, oh God. We just thank you for your word, and we just pray that something will be said to bless us and encourage us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen, amen. Once again, I thank everyone for joining. Uh, I'm going to uh, read in your hearing Ephesians uh, chapter 4 real quick, then we uh, get into the class uh, for... Okay, uh, Ephesians 4, chapter 11 um, says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Amen. And then I want to also read verse 12. Uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Once again, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And as we've been studying, we've been studying the gifts of the spirit, uh, these spiritual gifts. Uh, we have um, been taught that these gifts, amen, are given to us by God himself. And he went to um, through the grave, amen, to be able to release these gifts to us. And um, um, once we accept him as our personal savior, the Bible tells us, amen, that um, he gives us a measure of faith to believe in him. And then um, a measure of faith, amen, to be able to walk, walk and work in the gifts that he provides each and every one of us. Um, we've been encouraging the members um, um, to go out uh, to, to find out um, or get an idea what their gifts are so that they can start using those gifts, amen, for the kingdom of God. Um, and as we read in verse 12 tonight, um, all these gifts that we have been talking about um, in these last five that we are um, talking about are very, very important to the building up of the church, amen, building up of the members, amen. Um, these gifts are not used to profit each and every one of us individually, but these gifts are given, amen, to profit the church, amen, to profit the kingdom of God, amen, and to build it up and edify it. So um, if you're using these gifts to benefit yourself, amen, you could be out of order. I'm not saying that, but if you study the word of God, these gifts are being, are given to promote, amen, unity, to promote, promote togetherness, and to promote, amen, the the, the things of, of the kingdom of God, amen, in our churches, amen. So it's important that we work in these gifts. And as we studied um, the last few weeks, um, we've been talking about uh, the gift of apostle last week, the gift of a, a prophet last week, and we talked about the gift of evangelist. And tonight we're going to be talking about the gift of a pastor, um, very, very um, 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 important topic to talk about on tonight. And um, and what I love about this is that uh, what we're going to be reading tonight, I see that in our very own pastor. And I'm sure many of you all that's on and um, will view this in the future will see the same things, the attributes of a pastor and shepherd that is in our pastor as well. Uh, point four on page 13 reads, uh, the, the gift of a pastor, uh, this word means shepherd. Uh, A.T. Uh, Robertson points out that the Lord Jesus told Peter to shepherd his sheep, John 21, 16. And I'm going to be reading verses, uh, John 21, verses 15 through 17. And it reads, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Uh, verse 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, uh, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, be my sheep. Amen. So we're talking about how uh, 
those in leadership, amen. And, and the first point is how um, Jesus, amen, told Peter and was sharing with Peter how, amen, he wanted him, to, was telling him to feed his sheep, to feed his lambs, amen. And he not only said it to him one time, but he said it to him three times, amen. And he wanted to drive home that point, amen, uh, as a pastor, as a shepherd, to feed his sheep. Um, uh, Peter told other ministers, amen, to shepherd the flock of God. Okay, so we see here, J Jesus tells Peter, amen, uh, to shepherd his sheep. And then Peter tells other ministers here, ministers here to shepherd the flock. And 1 Peter 5, uh, 1 through 4, uh, reads this way. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4 says, the elders which are among you, I exhort who I am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock and God which among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So Jesus instructed Peter. And now we see here Peter instructing the elders, amen, to feed the flock, amen. And I love this, how he was instructing him in verse two, uh, feed the flock of God, which is, is among you, taking the oversight thereof. And loved it. I love this, not by constraint, but willingly, amen and not for filthy lucre. And that lucre there means money, amen. Not doing it for fame, fortune, or or money, amen. But do it of a ready mind, amen. That's a pastor that has a mind that's ready to feed the flock of God, serving him and not doing it, amen, for gain, but doing it because they have a call on their lives to share the gospel with, the, uh, with those that are under their care as a shepherd, amen. And then, we find um, that Paul um, tells the elders as well and ministers of Ephesus, amen, to shepherd the church of God for which Christ has died. And that's found in Acts verse 20, uh, chapter 20 and verse 28. And that reads, Acts 20, 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the flock, I mean, to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen. Once again, this is Paul uh, talking to the elders and ministers of the church. He says this, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, and I love that, the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen. And And, and I love how, you see the three different uh, ways that God is instructing. He instructed Peter uh, to uh, shepherd. Uh, then Peter instructs the elders to shepherd the flock of God. And then now we see here, Paul is now instructing the elders as well of Ephesus, amen, to shepherd, amen, the church of God, which Christ has died, amen. So, so important in reading these first couple of things. And I love this one part where um, in Acts 20, where it says, um, uh, the Holy Ghost, amen, have made you overseers, amen. Um, these are not uh, self-appointed uh, men and women of God, but God through the Holy Spirit has appointed these people to shepherd the flock, amen. Um, let's continue on. Uh, the traits of a shepherd can be seen by looking at the references to Christ as the shepherd of believers. The pastor is under, I'm sorry, the pastor is the under shepherd, amen, to the chief shepherd, uh, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Once again, the pastor is the under shepherd to the chief shepherd, uh, which is Christ, our Lord. Uh, point A, the shepherd knows the sheep. Amen. I love this as well. The shepherd knows the sheep. Uh, he knows each one by name. Uh, this is said to have been a fact among the shepherds and their sheep in Jesus' day. Shepherds actually knew each sheep individually. Even in large herds, the fact is certain, certainly true with Christ and his sheep, that Christ knows his sheep. Amen. 
And I um I love this. Uh I struggle with names, amen. And um, but as a pastor, as a shepherd, amen, uh uh they have their watchful eye over us, amen. And 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 how Jesus knew and knows his sheep, amen. Our shepherd, our pastor is in that same avenue where when uh, I know pastor prays and I know overseer pray. And um, I know, uh, amen, that they will call out our names, amen, that they will pray for us individually, amen, and corporately um, because they know us, amen. They know their sheep. They know when their sheep, as we're going to find out, are hurting, when their sheep needs feeding, uh, when their sheep, amen, just needs a little pat on the back, and also when their sheep needs discipline, amen, because that shepherd knows their sheep. And I thank God once again for our pastor Amen. Um, being that pastor that God has put over us and has that spirit, amen, of a shepherd, amen, to shepherd her people. Amen. Uh, some scriptures before I ask for some any questions or review. Um uh John 10 14 says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. Amen. The shepherd knows his sheep and is known, amen. Uh, in John 10, 14, 1 Corinthians 8 and 3 says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. Amen. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. And nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth, knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy 2, 19. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by name, thou art mine. Isaiah 43 and 1. So we we we're starting off with two points, amen. And first point is how, amen. Um, it's really not two points, it's just one point, but I continued on. I didn't take a pause there. Um, starting off with the word shepherd, that's the the um uh definition of what a pastor means is shepherd. And um, we first started off with Peter, amen, been instructed by the Lord Jesus to feed his sheep in John 21, 16. Uh, then Peter tells the ministers that was under his care, amen, to shepherd the flock of God, 1 Peter 5 and 2. And that, uh, then Paul, amen, instructs the elders, amen, and ministers at that time of Ephesus, amen, to do the same thing, to shepherd the church. And then as we continued on, we went into how Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd, amen, and how he knows us, amen, and he not only knows us, but he knows us by name, amen, and I think that's an awesome thing that we have someone that cares for us and loves for us that uh, we just not um, something, uh, or as they say, a passerby, but he takes the time to know us, where they know our names, amen, they know our uprising, they know our downsetting, amen, uh, just as Jesus did, our shepherd, the under shepherd, shepherd to the to the Lord Jesus Christ has that position, amen, to be able to shepherd the people just as Jesus was shepherding. Uh, Jesus was instructing the other elders and ministers at that time to shepherd the flock as well. So the first point on tonight is, is shepherds, amen, um, and how the shepherds, amen, were instructed by Jesus to feed the flock. And that flock is those that are under their care. In Restoration Christian Fellowship Church, as a church, our pastor is um, Imogene Ingram, Pastor Imogene Ingram, and that's our shepherd, that's the chief shepherd, and that's who has watched over us, amen, and um, and like I said, I know she knows our name, and I know she uh, prays and watches over us, so at this time, I'm going to open up the floor before we go into uh, point B, right, amen, if any thoughts. Yes, Sister Ricky. Um, I was just thinking when you were uh, expounding on how the shepherd knows his sheep. Um, when we were taught before, even in knowing your sheep, like how a mother cares for their kids when they're sick and you um, tend to them, dirty diapers, uh, cleaning up if they've gotten sick to their stomach or something like that. And that's how the shepherd cared for his sheep trying to keep flies and bugs and stuff out of their noses and um, not letting them succumb to disease, how they would put oil on them and everything like that. And so it was more than just 
a, a general care. Like yeah. these are yeah. in my care. He really, really individually took sincere care of each and every one of them. And that's how God does us, that we are all special in his sight individually. Like we're one body, but individually he knows everything about you. He knows when you're hurting. He knows when you're sad. He knows everything. He goes before us and he has our back at the same time. So yeah. it's 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 just beautiful to think of it that way. It's not yeah. just like, uh, it, it almost likened to, I guess, how people have pets as their children or, or things like that. We know the father, we're his children, but the, the, the depth of his care is mm. wonderful. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, very uh, good point, Sister Ricky. And that's, like I said, it's so important to know that you have, um, just as uh, Jesus cared for us, that our pastor cares for us that same way. Amen. Um, where, as you said, they take the time to nurture. They take the time. Uh, um, and I love how you brought up about the flies, how they would keep the flies out of their noses and watch out for them, the oil on them. Uh, amen. And how the shepherd would just, um, but the what I love about the shepherd in, in my studies is, is, as we're studying today, is that he knew each sheep individually. Like, you know, it wasn't like he knew, okay, this group over there, or I got 10 over here, I got 20 over here. And um, and from my understanding and studying, the shepherd would usually shepherd anywhere between a uh, hundred or more sheep at a time. And they knew, amen, if a sheep got away, they knew if a sheep wasn't keeping up with the pack, amen, they would look around, okay, I'm missing Charlie. Where, where's Charlie? And then they would go find and look for Charlie. Amen. Um, because they cared. Amen. Um, that same love that Jesus had for his people, um, pastors have, amen, for their people that are under them, that they're shepherding as well. Um, not only to care for them, as we're going to find out, but to feed them, love them, um, lead them to greener pastures. Um, it's just a very, very, very important role of a pastor. And it's not to be taken lightly. And it's not to be, um, as they say, um, uh, taken for granted, amen, um, because many times, um, this one thing I wanted to say on tonight is let's not take each other for granted and let's not get familiar with each other um, because once you start to get familiar, amen, um, you're taking away the anointing that is on our pastor's life or an elder or even your co, um, your lay um, person in the, in the congregation, a friend, amen, because now you're just looking at them, okay, here we go again, amen, okay, it's just them. Amen. Oh, that's the way they shout. That's the way they pray or whatever it may be. Amen. We start to take people for granted. And I, I know over the years, um, I've seen it happen where over the years, people get so familiar with leadership and pastors. Amen. That they begin to take them for granted. Amen. Um, and what I love about our shepherds, and, and I've seen it firsthand, is that even when they're taken for granted, the love is still there. They don't dismiss you and they don't leave you behind. Amen. That's the mark of a true shepherd. Amen. So, um, and I figured I'd be talking more about our pastors since I'm close to them. And uh, I just love them. And I, they have taught me how to be an elder and be an um, assistant pastor. And they taught me by their example how to be excellent pastors in the name of, of Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, any other thoughts before we move on to point B? Uh, just one well, more point. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> just quickly, what... When you were saying about even how the pastor knows their flock individually, even if the if something's wrong and you haven't said it to anybody, that God has given them that spirit to discern, to to reach out to you. They don't just leave you off to the side like, oh, they'll work it out or I'll wait till they'll come to me in the most gentle, godly way to make our way over to you and comfort you or give you a word of encouragement. You know, it doesn't always have to be like, uh, you got to describe what was wrong or whatever, but somehow or another, even with her and overseer, which is always know that right time and that right place to give you a word of encouragement. Even if you're feeling down about whatever, they, you know, God has given them that and they listen to what God, the prompting of God. Because you could get 
prompted and don't listen and miss it. And then you have people feeling a kind of way. But I just thank God that they listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, once again, a very good point there, Sister Ricky. Um, yes, Pastor. Well, you know, I was just thinking, you know, all those things that uh, you have all, already said are just, you know, profound, you know. Um, we are under shepherds. And um, I was thinking about a thought that I heard someone say not too long ago, said, being a pastor, you can pastor a person that do not love you, but you cannot pastor a person that do not respect you. Mm. Wow. I mean, there might be people that's in the audience that really don't like you. But mm -hmm. you can still pass it then because they, you know, but the, but those that don't have respect for you are the ones that you could never pass to. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had also alluded to familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. You see, when you get so familiar with the leaders and, um, and, and that's where we have to really watch and pray not only as 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 pastors, just in just sisters and brothers in general, you know, yes. because you don't get to the place that you just like you said take people for granted, take your sisters for granted, your brothers in Christ for granted, or your pastor for granted. You know, it can be easily done, you know, before you know it. But um, the thing about it, if you can just follow, you know, the scriptures. Love your enemies, you know. Don't uh, do good to those that hate you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If you just keep that that principle, if you just keep the kingdom principle in mind, you, you're gonna make it regardless. Who yes. hates you or not like you or don't respect you, you're still gonna make it. Yeah, you know. You trust in God. Mm. Do it all. Do it all. So yes. I mean, I don't take it lightly that I've been called to pastor. I says I was just reading not too long ago that uh, promotions come from God, not from the east or the west. God is the mm -hmm. one that promotes. It. And just mm -hmm. as you were talking, I was thinking about when Joe and I were on a consecration, not knowing where the Lord was directing us, but we know He had called us out from Mount Carmel, and we had to you know follow Him. You know, yeah. as he directed us. And I remember we were on a consecration. And that week of the consecration, I had a Christophany. A Christophany is when you see the form of Christ mm. right here in this dining room door, right from my, it goes right from my kitchen to my dining room. You know, and I never forget yeah. one night a lady had gotten, uh, one person had gotten healed, another person got filled with the Holy Ghost. And when Joe was taking them back home and I had sat in the chair in the living room, the Holy Spirit said to me, little did you know that when I showed up in your dining room door, that this house was, it was going to become my sanctuary. Jesus. So I know without a shadow of a doubt that we were called. You know? Yeah. So I just, I, right now, you know, like a lot of things are going on. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of things and a lot of things I'm doing, but I just relax in the Holy Ghost, even though I might get overwhelmed sometimes, but I'm just saying, no, I can do it through his grace. Yes. It's through his grace. It's yes. Good. And yes, in his grace. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you, uh, Pastor, for sharing that. And Yes, I just, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a little tough one, a uh, class on tonight. <laughs> but we'll get through it because, um, you know, when your heart is in something, um, I haven't learned how not to fire, get filled or separated. But it's such a blessing, amen, to um, to know that when you're around solid people, uh, I guess you see phonies and then you see people that are real for the kingdom of God. Um, it really um, makes you feel good that that's who you chose, amen, to be under, to be your shepherd, amen, to help you in the things of God, people that have a heart for you really, truly, amen. And then as pastor said, that even in their um, working and going about life, they have their own problems and own 
issues that they go through, but they still take the time, amen, to shepherd you and to shepherd the church. So it's such a blessing to have uh, honorable pastors um, that we have been under and that we are under now under our senior pastor, Imogene Ingram. Uh, point B, um, the shepherd feed the sheep, even if he has to gather them in his arms and carry them to the uh, feasting pastor. Amen. Uh, that's Isaiah 40 and 11 says, he shall feed the flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Amen. A shepherd feeds the sheep. Uh, amen. Even if he has to gather them in his own arms or her arms, amen, and carry them, amen, to the feasting pastor, pastor. That's what a pastor would do, amen. Isaiah 40 and 11. Uh, the C, point C, uh, the shepherd guides the sheep to the pasture and away from rough places and uh, precipices, amen. Uh, the shepherd guides the sheep to pastures and away from rough places and precipices. Uh, Psalms 23, 1 through 4, everyone knows that scripture. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And for my name, for his name's sake, amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. And once again, I love this because a shepherd, amen, is in place, amen, to um to uh to uh guide his sheep, amen, uh not just to the pastor, uh pasture, I keep saying that, but also amen, away from the rough places, amen. And I love that because um our pastors, amen, maybe they pull you aside or maybe they give you a call afterwards or have the Lord may lead them, amen. Um sometimes those words are as they would say, um, a little harsh or a little rough because they want to lead you and guide you, amen, through those rough places in life. Not only lead you through them, but lead you away from harm and away from danger, as we find here in Psalms 23, amen. And that's, once again, that's the heart of a shepherd. He guides his sheep to pasture and away from rough places, amen. And I love that, rough places, amen. Uh, pastor, um, when they pray and they um, God gives them insight about each individual sheep, amen. Um, that's where we would um, consider this um, away from rough places, amen. Poor green pastures, amen. That's the heart of a shepherd. D, uh, the shepherd seeks and saves the sheep who get lost, amen. And uh, that's what we were saying earlier in Matthew 18, 11 through 12. He says, for the son of man has come to save that which was lost. He think, how think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them go be gone astray, will if he not leave the 99 and go, at, go into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? Matthew 18, 11 through 12. And Ezekiel 34, 16 says, I will seek that which was lost and bring again that that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen them. I mean, strengthen that which is that which was sick. Uh, Ezekiel 34, 16. And that's another two good verses. The shepherd seeks and saves the sheep who get lost. Amen. And 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 that's once again, the heart of a pastor. Amen. Um, uh, I know once again, I only can give you by example. One of what I know is when um, someone may not come to Bible study or come to prayer or come to church, amen, that pastor, amen, um, has been notified by the Holy Spirit, amen, and this one may be in trouble or this one may be lost or I haven't heard from them, amen, and then as a shepherd, they check on them, see how they're doing, if they need help or um, if they're losing their way, amen, they'll be able to guide them, amen, back into the truths of God and, and to the pastors that um, God is leading them to, amen, so a shepherd, Amen. Slash pastor seeks and saves the sheep who get lost. Amen. And 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 and, and it happens. Amen. Um, where we have to um go back and 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 pull someone back into the fold that may be lost. Amen. Have lost their way, got around the wrong people, listen to the wrong people. Um, and as we was learning earlier, we have to be careful 
um, who we allow to speak into our ears. Amen. Um, anyone that's going to pull you away from your church, pull you away from your pastor's teachings, amen, um, that's leading you to destruction. So you need to be careful, amen, who you allow to speak into your ear as well, uh, because it's so important that you have, amen, the ear to listen to your pastor, amen. God has given them insight on our behalf, amen. And I think um, as stated, we can get so familiar um, when it's just another service where pastor or um, even an elder or even a lay person may have gotten um, through the unction of the Holy Spirit a word and because we disrespected or disregarded them, um, you miss it. And then uh, you, you go home, but others that were in tune with the Spirit gets it and now they're blessed, amen, uh, because they were able to be in position, amen, to hear what God is saying through their uh, man and woman of God. Uh, so, so important to, um, once again, to respect and honor our pastors, amen. And I know uh, soon um, um, in the future, um, we're going to learn more about that, amen, how to be uh, uh, more loyal, how to be better committed, amen, um, not just to our pastor, but to the vision, amen. And that loyalty, amen, uh, resides on us respecting and honoring our pastor, amen, and not treating them once again as just another ordinary person, amen. And then, um, um, I don't want to get into the book, so I'm going to stop because I'll I be all in the book. Amen. The shepherd protects the sheep. He even sacrifices his life for the sheep. Uh, John 10 and 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give, giveth his life for the sheep. John 10 and 11. Hebrews 13 and 20 says, Now the God of peace that born again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting. Once again, pastors slash shepherds protects their sheep, even sacrifices for them. Amen. Sacrifices his own life for them, for his sheep. Point F, uh, the shepherd restores the sheep who go astray in return. Uh, that's similar to what we were talking about earlier. First Peter 2.25 says, um, uh, the uh, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. First Peter 2, 25. Point G, uh, the shepherd rewards the sheep for obedience and faithfulness. Uh, First Peter 5 and 4 says, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. First Peter 5 and 4. Amen. Uh, the shepherd rewards the sheep for obedience and faithfulness. In First Peter 5, 4, once more time, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Point H, the shepherd shall keep the sheep separate from the goats. <laughs> uh, Matthew 25, 32 and verse 33 says, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Amen. The shepherd shall uh, separate, amen, the sheep from the goats. Amen. So our, uh, um, our fourth uh, gift that we have um, shared with you on, on tonight is that is the gift of a pastor and how the pastor is a shepherd. Amen. And how Jesus Christ, amen, instructed the, the, the apostles how to shepherd the flock, how to feed the flock, uh, and how to um, do great things, amen, under the unction of the Holy Spirit for the kingdom of feeding, shepherding, and taking care of the flock that has been given um, to them, amen. And then we also learned how the pastor, amen, Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd, and the pastor is the under shepherd, amen. Um, and I just, once again, just love the fact, amen, that a pastor's heart, amen, his goal is to feed us, amen, to uh, her, his or hers is to feed us, lead us, guide us, discipline us, amen, to get us to the point where God wants us to be in life, amen. That is a gift, amen. I don't think everyone is called to be pastors or shepherds, um, as pastor stated, because a lot of times you got to go beyond um, your realm of um, 
your time, your commitment, amen, your money, your finances, amen. Um, and that's when you know when people are truly committed, uh, amen, when their finances, amen, they believe in their heart that God has called them to a work and they now backing that calling up with their giving, their time, amen, their effort, amen, putting in the work, as they would say, amen, because of the vision God has given, um, given them for this part of the vineyard. So pastors, amen, um, are shepherds, amen, um, meaning of a pastor. And once again, um, as I said last week, we have a great pastor. And if I had more people on, we'd be clapping our hands right now, thanking God for our pastor that is shepherding, shepherding us and feeding us, amen. And that's what I love about our pastor. She feeds us, amen, and gives us the word of God and then lives by example, amen, of a good shepherd. Amen. Uh, many thoughts before I uh, give you an introduction of, uh, we may do a little bit of teacher um, on tonight because teacher is pretty lengthy. No, no, I can get through teacher. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go into teaching. Yes, Sister Ricky. Uh, just real quick, because my, uh, I just looked up precipices just to make sure that I knew what it meant. And um, it's like a cliff or a sheer drop or something that's steep. A situation of deep peril so that yeah. just gave that more understanding for me along with the rough places is that they'll pull you off a cliff and I remember so many times uh, even pastor using the phrase about having to snatch somebody out the fire you know yeah. and that's what a pastor would do is to keep you from going off that cliff and keeping you safe yeah Yes, uh, that's. I'm glad you brought that point out, Ricky. That was a very good point. Amen. When you're about to go off the cliff, amen. <laughs> when you're about to go to your demise, our uh, pastors are there to pull you back. Amen. Uh, we'd like to say hello, Lewis. Welcome to the class on tonight. Um, uh, we're studying the gift of pastor on tonight. Um, page. Uh, well, we have to page, I believe, fourteen now. Um, we can really look at the gift of a teacher. Amen. Um, uh, any other thoughts on? The gift of pastor before we move on uh, to the gift of teacher on tonight. All right. Uh, so the next gift, amen, is the gift of a teacher. Um, some commentators consider teaching to be part of the gift of a pastor. Uh, that is, the pastor is the is the pastor teacher. The function of a, of the teacher is the gift to instruct uh, believers in the truth of God and His Word. It is the gift to root and ground people in doctrine, uh, reproof, correction, and righteousness. Teaching is a high calling, one of the greatest callings, um, uh, one of the greatest callings. Teaching is ranked second only to the spiritual gifts of apostle and prophet. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28 says this, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, and thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps governments and diversities of tongues, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Every apostle and prophet and pastor has the gift of teaching, but every teacher is not an apostle or prophet or pastor. The gift of teaching bears one of the largest responsibilities given by God. Therefore, the teacher will be required to give a strict account to God for his faithfulness and using his gift. In uh, James 3 and 1, I'm reading this in the New Living Translation. In the New Living Translation, James 1 and 3 and 1 says this, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Amen. Those who teach. Um, uh, uh, here, um, uh, James is instructing the believers, amen, and that those in leadership, listen, he says, dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers. He's letting them know, don't play games with this. Not many of you should become teachers in the church, uh, for we who teach, amen, will be judged more strictly, amen. So this is not a game. This is not something you get into because you want to do it for the lamp, the limelight, or you think you're doing it, amen. Uh, because it's going to give you more views and more likes and more dislikes and get you a speaking engagement. Amen. We have to be uh, truth with this gift and we don't take advantage 
uh, to use this guilt, get our uh, gift, amen, um, not for what God has uh, designed it to be used for, amen. So once again, amen, um, the gift of teaching bears one of the largest responsibilities given by God. Therefore, the teacher will be required to give a strict account, amen, to God uh, for his faithfulness in using his or her gift. The spiritual gift of teaching is the gift of understanding and communicating the word of God. Um, it is the gift of edifying believers in the truths of God's word. It involves understanding, interpreting, amen, arranging, communicating the word of God. The gift of teaching is given to the believer who commits his life, amen, to the word of God, to sharing its glorious truths with God's people, amen. The gift of teaching is given to the believer who commits his or her life to, to the word of God, glory to God. Ooh, commits their life, amen, their, their, their being, their all, who they are, every minute, every moment, if possible, at all times, amen, you're committing yourself, amen, to the life, amen, of the word of God, amen, and not only committing to the word of God, but sharing the glorious truths with God's people, amen, that is the gift of a teacher, amen, uh, the well, once again, the teacher is, is a gift that don't go into it lightly uh, because you will be judged by God himself for your faithfulness with that gift of teaching. Amen. And the gift of, of um, teaching, once again, amen, is um, is the understanding of, of communicating the word of God, edifying um, the believers and the truth of God's word. And it involves understanding, interpreting, arranging and communicating the word of of God. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask if someone could read that group of scriptures on tonight. Uh, There's quite a few, but if someone would volunteer to read those. Go ye, therefore, and touch all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things Whatever I have commanded you, and no I am with you, even to the end of the world. Hello, hello, mom. Yes. Are you close to the mic? Uh, I can barely can hear you. Hear me? Oh, I can hear you better now. Yeah. I was holding my head down. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Mm -hmm. That was Matthew uh, 28, verses 19 through 20. Acts 20, 20. 32 states, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Yeah. Acts 20, 32. Wow. <laughs> and God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondly, prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. First Corinthians 12, 28. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers, Ephesians 4 and 11. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Second Timothy 3.16. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scripture, scriptures daily whether those things were so. 
Acts 17 and 11. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. First Peter chapter two, verses two and three. Yes, thank you, Pastor. So that mm -hmm. uh, brings us to the end of um, uh, these five gifts that we've been studying the last two weeks. Um, we once again we studied about the apostle, Amen. Uh, we studied about um, uh, the prophet, Amen. And then we studied about the evangelist. And tonight we studied about, amen, the, the, the role and gift of a pastor and a gift of teaching, amen. Um, these are, um, um, some um, commentators say these are five important gifts, and these are um, pretty much some of the gifts that pretty much govern and um, the church per se, um, and uh, they're important gifts, once again, uh, for the church, and once again, to edify and to build up the church. So um, once again, if they, if you were an apostle um, who established and set up and took leadership of um, orchestrating, um, building churches, amen, um, that was a gift given by the Lord. Prophet, um, if that's someone that God has um, given that the gift of prophecy, you're able to speak, amen, um, the word that God has given you to speak on an event, um, whether it's future or um, present. Amen. And that gift, once again, is to, supposed to be used to edify and build up the church, not for yourself. Amen. And then the gift of evangelists. Uh, we covered how the evangelists, amen, they have the gift of preaching the gospel. Amen. They have an unction to share the gospel wherever they may be, wherever they may go. Um, and also we learned about the evangelist that could be also a missionary. Amen. That has been called, amen, out to remote parts of our world to share the things of God. Amen. And then tonight we covered the, the gift of pastor, which is a shepherd, which is the under shepherd to our shepherd, Jesus Christ, who have been put in position to shepherd us, to, to lead us, to guide us, to instruct. Amen. To, um, as Ricky said earlier, to pull us back from the cliff. Amen. Um, but that's a very, very important role of a pastor. And once again, we said earlier that we don't want to ever get familiar or lose respect. For our pastors, we want pastor, we want to honor her. Um, uh, we want to love her and give her the due respect that she deserves. Amen. Because God has put her in that position as his under shepherd, the shepherd us at restoration into the world now, um, as, as we are finding out um, uh, through our radio, I mean, through radio and even on um, our Facebook and YouTube channels, uh, it's just not a cyclical event anymore. People are watching and getting instruction all over the world now. And then you have the gift of teaching, which God was um, sharing, sharing with us tonight, not to go into that um, gift of teaching lightly, um, because you will be judged. Amen. God will judge you himself for your faithfulness in that gift and that gift um, of teaching. Amen. Once again, you got to uh, as they say, put the time and study God's word, commit yourself to his word to be able to share it in a manner that other people will um, uh, 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 get what God is saying and be edified and be built up in the things of God. So these five gifts that we covered, apostle, uh, prophecy, uh, uh, evangelist, pastor, teacher, um, as stated, some of the commentators believe these are five critical gifts. And these are five important gifts to the church. Amen. Not, not saying the other gifts that we uh, talked about early on were less important, but these usually five gifts here usually govern or in position to um, uh, to uh, to lead the church. Amen. So we thank God for those five gifts on tonight. Uh, before we um, uh, turn it over to pastor for any uh, remarks before we go over our church announcements, uh, do anybody have any comments on the class so far? Um, all on on these five gifts and what you might have got got out of the lesson on tonight. And once again, I thank you, Lewis, for joining. And it looks like Deacon Frank is on as well. We'd like to say hello to both of you guys. Uh, any thoughts before we uh, turn it over to Pastor? Before we do um, announcements, yes. Um, I just once again want to just uh, thank God that He given us our pastor that we have. Um, she's not crooked. She don't have no uh, secondary motive, 
but to serve God and to, to show people how to serve God and why they want to show God and to show his love through her teaching the unction of the Holy Spirit that um, she's obedient to Christ and that she's been faithful. You know, it it's, can be easy to accept the task, but to follow through with the task could be harder. You know, I um, just recently heard at, um, encouraging someone else, like sometimes you're not gonna feel like doing it, but yet over these almost 40 years, she has continued to do it and do it faithfully as unto the Lord. And I just want to say, I appreciate that. And yes, it's not a Sicklerville thing anymore and nor should it have ever been. We should all even be sharing what we've been taught. But now, especially with the help of technology and things, people all over the world can um, gain from her knowledge and experience and her obedience and faithfulness to God. Amen. A very uh, awesome there, Sister Ricky. Uh, thank you for those words. Uh, anyone else before I put you in the hands of our pastor? Okay, um, I'm putting you in the hands of our senior pastor, Imogen Ingram, at this time. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're going to make yes. me cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I've, I've heard people make the statement that sometimes um, people want to be in certain positions, but that character cannot keep them there. Mm. Wow. And it, it means so much, you know, when your character, I'm not perfect, far from perfect, none of us, but, you know, um, I, I, my heart is for the people. Yes, yes. And I know my desire for every believer that I'm, I'm, I'm the under shepherd over is that they would reach their fullest potential. Yes. And I'm there to cheer them on to reach that fullest potential. Yes. So I just thank God, you know, for the Bible study on tonight. Um, and, and for the fact that God, you know, did call me to be a teacher and a preacher. I had two separate encounters. So I do know that I have, I was I am called as a pastor teacher. Yes. And and when you consider uh, those gifts in Ephesians, it talks about the fact that these gifts are a gift to the body. Yes. You know, it's it's a gift to the body to help build up, unify, train, teach until we all come to the unity of the faith. You know, and we only just have the mandate that God has put on our lives. It's no more than the same mandate that God has put on every believer that they've been yeah. called into the ministry of reconciliation. They have not been called into the ministry, but they have been called, you know, into the ministry of reconciliation because we all are responsible for sharing the gospel. Yes. But then, of course, the pastors in, uh, have a different mandate besides that you know you have to instruct you be proved you be good you know and do all those things yes and and so and then there's a scripture that talks about the fact that as believers and um the members should not make it hard for the leaders yes. and don't make it grievous for them based on their unruliness you know the bible even says in hebrew says uh obey them that have rule over you know, in the Lord. And I'm not talking about people that shepherd and trying to control your life, telling you who you, where you can go, where you can't go, who you should marry and all of that. That's, that's shepherding. That, that's the wrong type of shepherding, you know, but just to have the general respect. And I do, you know, I have it at restoration and I, I, I love the people, you know, and I just thank God for the call. I thank yeah. God for the call. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, like I said, for me, I, I knew this was going to be a little uh, tough one to get through uh, because um, um, I believe in honoring uh, pastors and honoring those, as Pastor said, have rule over us that that are worthy of the honor. Amen. And our pastor, pastor is definitely worthy of the honor. Amen. Because as stated, Sister Ricky and others, 
Um, she's not doing it, amen, to be doing it, but she's doing it because God called her to be our pastor, to be our teacher, to be our leader, to be our uh, guide through life and through the things of God. And um, and I just love her mothering spirit, amen, that um, uh, helps us along the way um, and just points us in the right way for to do the things of God, amen. Um, truly, amen, a true giant in the faith, amen, is our pastor and was our overseer, amen. And I just thank God for my two examples before me as pastors. I love them. And they are definitely called pastors. Amen. So um, uh, at this time, announcements. I was about to, to say, uh, have a good night. Um, once again, I thank everyone for sharing on tonight. Um, our announcements for this week. Um, once again, uh, Time of Restoration radio broadcast. Once again, it's every Thursday at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRradio.com, uh, 800 a.m. radio, uh, rcfcchurch.org, and Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts under Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. Uh, our senior pastor is doing a teaching on trusting God. Uh, as I was uh, putting this up, I said, wow, we have to part 10. Uh, she's up to part 10 on tomorrow morning. Um, if you have an opportunity to, to tune in. Um, you can tune in at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRradio.com for the live broadcast. Or once again, you can go to our church webpage or our Google podcast or Apple podcast to pick up um, the teaching Trusting God Part 10 on tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Um, on August 18th, it's a Friday night. We have Family and Friends Day. Um, it's a whole Family and Friends Day weekend. Um, August 18th, um, it's a community event, and Sunday, August 20th, is Stay Connected uh, Family and Friends Day service at 10 a.m., and I think I have a slide here. Yes, um, this is the slide that they are posting um, up on Facebook and sharing throughout the community. Uh, Little Restores Learning Center, you're invited to Family and Friends Day. Um, there will be raffle drawings every 30 minutes, games, food, music. Um, um, also joined by many local businesses as well, will be taking part in that day. Um, it's August 18th, Friday, August 18th from 4 to 8 p.m. on the grounds of Restoration Christian Fellowship Church, 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081, free admission. Uh, bring your kids, bring yourself. Um, it's going to be a dynamite event. Last year event was great. We had vendors, um, we had uh, food, and also we had um, fun and recreation for the young people as well. It's a great event. Um, once again, that's Family and Friends Day, uh, August 18th from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, on August 18th. Amen. Uh, sponsored by Little Restores Learning Center. Um, coming up from the event team, um, come celebrate doing life together for such a time as this. Uh, uh, that's going to be um, joining Restoration Christian Fellowship Church for an afternoon of laughter, uh, family, friends, and food, entertainment, and fun. Um, looks like it's going to be an awesome time. Uh, and um, that's going to be uh, September 16th. It's going to be on a Saturday yeah, afternoon from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. September 16th. Um, it's a donation involved, uh, $35. That $35 will cover your entry into the event, your food. Uh, for that night, also um, uh, an opportunity to walk a red carpet. Um, I'm not sure if anybody ever did that at Restoration. They may have at other churches, but uh, you can walk the red carpet and take some pictures with your significant other, other or by yourself um, because you come and dress, amen, uh, looking your best as we found out on Sunday by Sister uh, Alice. Alice. Sister Alice. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sister Alice, amen, to come look in your best, amen, uh, because it's going to be an awesome event. Once again, that's come celebrate doing life together for such a time as this, September 16th, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, there's limited seating as well. I'm not sure they didn't put that on the event uh, flyer that we're going to post and that's going to be posted um, on Facebook. Um, there is limited seating. So once the tickets are gone, um, there's, they're gone. Um, you won't be able to get into the event. So uh, first come, first serve. So get your tickets while they are available. And as they say, while they're hot, um, that's going to be an awesome event right after Family and Friends Day. Amen. So we look forward to those three events coming up. 
And once again, we just thank God for um, the events that God has placed on the hearts of our pastor and event team and those in charge of doing programs to take care of um, for God's glory. Amen. Um, did I miss any um, announcements? Well, we all good. Okay. Um, at this time, um, I'm going to ask um, Sister Ricky if she will close us out in prayer at this time. All right. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, you are Lord of all. You're the King of Kings the Lord of Lords, Lord God. We thank you for being our chief cornerstone, Lord God, that you are setting the precedence for in which we should live, Lord God. We thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you for your instruction, your correction, and your rebuke, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the wisdom to, for us to accept your correction and rebuke, Lord God. It, it might be easy to get accolades, Lord God, but it takes wisdom and strength, Lord God, to accept rebuke, Lord God, and to learn from it, Father. Oh, Lord, as we learn today about pastors and teachers, Father God, we just once again want to thank you for our pastor, Father God, and our teachers, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you um, that you would continue to give us a spirit and um, uh, of reverence for her, of respect, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for our pastor and for the office that you have called her to, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. It's not something that she appointed to herself, Father, but that you uh, appointed her to do it, Father God. And we just want to honor that and respect that, Father God. Uh, you gave her to us, Lord God, for the whole body, Lord, for us to learn our gifts, Father God, to learn your word and your way, Father God, for us to be able to share with, with others, with the community and the world at large, Lord God, for us to understand and apply the gospel, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Um, we just want everyone to be able to use their gifts so that we can help to build up the entire body of Christ, Lord. And those unsaved, Lord God, we want to uh, pull them from the fire, Father God, as stated earlier. And even as our pastor uh, keeps us from the rough places, the high places, leads us off the ledges and the cliffs, Lord God, we just thank you once again for our pastor, our teacher, Father God. We thank you for all pastors and teachers across the world, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Give them strength and endurance, Lord God. Give them wisdom, Father God. Encourage and comfort them, Father God, when they need it, Father. I know sometimes I can understand that it could be a lonely place to be in, Father God, but I know that they're heart is trusted in you, Lord God, yes. in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We thank you for comforting them, bless them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father God, in a, in a tangible way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. Let them know, Father God, let them feel your presence all around. Yes. It's yes. Uh, unescapable, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they're not alone, Father God. And it, it might be a hard and difficult task, Father God, but your grace is sufficient, Father God, you wouldn't have called them to do it, Lord God, if you wouldn't give them the grace to go through it, Father God. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you that we won't become familiar uh, with our pastor, Father God. And we thank you that in the end, Lord God, she'll receive a crown of glory, Father yeah, God. And, yeah. and she's not doing it for the crown of glory, God, but that's your reward, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, thank for you. that reward for her, yeah. Father God. Oh, yeah. and all the jewels that are be in it, all those that she have taught and led to yes. Christ and witnessed Glory to, to Father God. Yes. We just thank you for all, everything that she has poured out, Father God. And um, like your word said about the teachers, Father God, that they have committed their life, Father God, to serving you, Father God. And we thank you for her honor in that commitment, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we just pray our longevity, Father God, everything that she's given out, Father God, we ask that you restore it, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for our teacher, even on tonight, Father God, as he has been teaching us in Ephesians and leading our Bible studies and speaking on Sundays and anything that's required, Father God, that um, Elder Kenny too be blessed, Father God, and that everything that concerns him, Father God, that you would 
Give them ease, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. And you would give them peace, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So we just thank you. We thank you for all the teachers of restoration. We thank you for our community and how we'll be a blessing on Friends and Family Day for our community event. And then we pray that um, those would still come out on Sunday, Father God, to enjoy us with our friends and family day on our Sunday yeah. service, Father God. And that is, it's for everybody, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and that they'll receive your word, they'll come expecting your word, Father God, and that they won't leave out the same way they came in, Lord God, that it would be better, Father God, because we know that every day with you is sweeter and sweeter, Father God. So we just thank you for the lives that will be changed in advance, Father God. And we just thank you in advance also for this coming Sunday that there'll be signs and wonders after yes, we have heard yes, your yes. word preached, Father God. Yes. So I thank you for this Bible study. Bless every home that's represented, Lord God. And those that are not, Lord God, we lift up the grieving uh, families to you, Lord God. Those yes. that are on the prayer list, Father God, we thank you for this uh, wonderful night of teaching and learning in your word, Father God. And we ask that everyone just have a sweet night's rest, Lord God, and that their soul be committed to you, Father God. And we thank you once again for this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And if there's anything that I forgot, Lord God, you know what was on my heart. And I thank you for it, for just knowing what it is and being able to take care of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Ricky. Um, yes. Now, once again, we thank you for joining. Please have a blessed night. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Please be blessed and have an awesome night. We look forward Thank to seeing you on Sunday or Wednesday in church. Um, Sunday or next Wednesday on the broadcast. Please be blessed. Have an awesome Thank night. You. God bless. Bye.